This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, this is a 40 year old lady who is a farmer by profession presented with a history of blood trauma with a stick to her left eye about 5 days back and this is the clinical picture. The anti lens capsule has ruptured, the cornea is intact though. Uh, there is severe inflammation, the pressures are high, the anterior is shallow and of course we have a traumatic cataract. The A scan shows a very shallow anterior chamber, the B scan seemed alright and whenever there is a ruptured anterior capsule in a traumatic cataract, early intervention has to be mandatory. So the patient was treated with a topical antibiotic steroids and anti medications and then the patient was taken for surgery two days later. The first thing I do here is to delineate the anti-capsule by staining with the trypan blue dye. I want to map out the extent of anti-capsule tear. Of course, at this stage, I don't have any idea about the status of the posterior capsule. The posterior sanica is released using a spatula. It looks like the anti-capsule tear has extended equator to equator. The lens matter is very soft and this is a young patient and I'm trying to aspirate it with a bimanual INA but it seems difficult as the matter is cheesy and thick so I'm unable to catch it with the aspiration port. It surely is taking some time. I change my strategy, I enter through the main wound and try to loosen the cortex using a combination of uh, irrigating fluid and viscodissection. Eventually uh, with the mild shallowing of the antechamber, I am hoping that the irrigating fluid is going to loosen out the lens matter and it can be irrigated out. This strategy worked out and the lens matter could be mobilized quite effectively. The feed up lens matter is now being aspirated out using the bimanual IND. At this moment I am feeling that the AC is progressively getting shallower. I can see that the posterior capsule is being perilously close to my aspiration port. I go back with OVD and deepen it. As I continue, this is the moment I realize that there is an equatorial PC tear and possible vitreous disturbance. It took some time for the reflex switch to get activated. Uh, I could eventually reflex it out and then come out. Uh, without removing my irrigation cannula which is in my left hand, I inject triamcinone acetate to confirm the presence of the vitreous prolapse and uh, I'm using dispersive OVD to tamponate the area and at this moment I'm deciding whether to use the anterior or the posterior route to perform uh, antivitrectomy. I decide to go with the past plan approach for tackling the vitreous. The goal is obviously to minimize the extension of the posterior capsule tear so that it could still be possible to implant the lens into the bag. The pass pan approach is ideal for this. Vitrector is introduced about 2.5 mm behind the limbus. Care needs to be taken to ensure that the cutter does not chew off the posterior capsule uh, during the process of antivitrectomy. Hence, I constantly ensure that the vitrector port is turned downwards or sidewards and never upwards. After limited antivitrectomy, I am back uh, deepening the capsule bag with OVD and the remaining cortex has to be aspirated out. We 
we can see that the equatorial PC tear margin is fibrotic which actually is a good thing. Before switching hands I deepen the chamber with OVD and then switch hands to remove the remaining cortex. Some more of the cortex is remaining again before switching hands OVD is used and finally all of the cortex which was within the bag is aspirated out. Some amount of antivitrectomy is done and coincidentally some of the posteriorly displaced lens matter is consumed. The bag is deepened with OVD and the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. The fibrotic band at the capsular margin needs to be removed. I am using the vitrector to enlarge the anticapsular opening. This can be done in a controlled manner. After removing the OVD, I also perform a small peripheral iridectomy. The reason being, well, intraoperatively I was progressively feeling that the AC was shallowing and this was just to minimize the rare chance of a pupillary block in the post-op period. The sterotomy is being closed now with an etovacral suture as will be the conjunctiva with a buried knot. Well the case finally ends and that's it and eventually she did pretty well this is how the eye looks in the immediate post-op period obviously there was some inflammation eventually it settles down thank you for watching and hope this helps